I wanted to post this video because nobody has any video of them disassembling a CR-10 that I could find. There's a whole bunch of SKR Mini E3 videos, but nobody shows how they put it in a different box because I've already done, on, done it on the Ender 3, which is simple because the USB and SD card slot are out in the open, but with the CR-10 box, you have to modify a little bit. Uh, I won't be showing the new box in this video, but I just wanted to show some pictures of it all assembled and apart because I could not find any. Not that I couldn't figure it out, I just thought somebody might want to see this as a reference. This is a stock board, This is nothing has been changed. I did take a few screws out before I started taping, but I put it together so you could see how it would be when you first take it apart. Uh, this will be getting a big tree tech. SKR Mini E3 version 1.2 control board, 32-bit, I'm reading this off of Amazon, with TFT35 E3 version 3 graphic smart display controller board for Creality Ender 3. Now it's the same as an Ender 3 CR10, doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, here's me blowing out some dust. And the air compressor I'm using is a uh, Harbor Freight super quiet air compressor. I also did a review on. Check that out if you want to.
you want this copy to SD root directory. And you just go to you just go to code, download zip, save file. Don't exit. Downloads, Big Tree Tech Firmware Master, copy to copy to SD card root directory to update. You want your TFT thirty five, so we'll just we'll just copy this. Go to our Flash drive, paste, and then we have the Big Tree TFT 35 version 3E 3.26. So we'll copy this and paste, and that should be all we need. Saving. Here I've got everything hooked up, ready to run. I have turned it on once. This is just a mock-up setup. I'm not saying you should do this, but uh, it runs fine the way it is. I'll probably put a fan on this because I'm trying to speed things up because I need a bigger box to put this touchscreen in. Uh, because the ports on the sides need to be exposed, and you can't do that with a metal box with a CR-10. So, I mean, at least I don't want to cut a hole in the side, and not to mention there's a big gap from the side to the side of the screen that you'd have to reach in like this far to plug in the the USB. So I'm just going to print a whole new box. found a pretty good model. I'll share that below. Um, my uh, Ender 3 has been running all day yesterday printing the base for this box and uh, I just never did do the firmware update on this yet so I was mostly doing RC stuff but anyway we'll uh, I'll show you one thing that out of all the stuff to plug in that's pretty straightforward on this is uh, the only thing that I had to question and look up is which way this plug goes. I mean, you have your your TFT35 that goes into EXP3. No, wait a second. Yeah. Um, anyway, the plug that's on the... The one plug you had before is this wire. And the new plug you'll have is this one. And it goes into RS232. But it has one plug that <coughs> is by itself and that is the let's see can you see that no so this plug goes in right there to TFT and this one little wire this one little wire right here is by itself it's got four and one plug and then one by itself and an easy way to know where that goes is you can look on the bottom on this particular board and it says RST down there that is for reset so you want this wire to go to the reset so simply you can look at it right here and flip it over and know that the reset is to the far right so it would be right there so that is the way it plugs in if you plug it in backwards it probably just won't come on so Go ahead and turn this on. All we should have to do is plug in the USB and flip it on. OK. 
Okay, here we go. That is not how I expected that to go. As you can see, the USB drive does not work to load the firmware. You need to use the large SD card. Um, I installed the firmware and it did not work. You'll see what happens. I kept getting the message that said, missing files, please insert card with updated files or something like that. Worked that time. See if we can hold it down. Marlin mode. Perfect. Okay, so I was going to show you what I actually put in here. Uh, the TFT35 I got from here, which I'm pretty sure is the same one I used before when I showed you this. But the only thing that was different was I left the firmware. Uh, BMP file in there that came with it on the SD card. This is on the 128 megabyte SD card that came with the board. And then this came with it too. But then I added the uh, E3.26 and I used the hybrid red menu which have been this TFT-35. I like the red menu. I got on my other one. Works. That's all I can tell you. If you have issues, there is, or there's a bunch of different uh, themes out there, but uh, good luck. This is the newest Cura. It's doing some funky travel. I'm always leery of using the newest Cura on a long print. This is going to be... How long is this one? Print a box now. It's going to be 19 hours, 19 minutes. So, how much filament? 76 meters. So, hopefully this works out good. I was going to do the whole box, but it's about that size. And to do the whole box and like 20% infill, it was going to be four and a half days. I am in quarantine, but man, I'd like to print more things than just one on this machine. So 
Not to mention, if it fails halfway through, it would really suck. It was going to be 300 meters. 307, so that's a little over one whole reel, too. And I might have had it. I might have had a lot of infill on that one. But, anyway. She's working pretty good. I've got this turned so the fan blows, because this is pretty cold in here right now. And the humidity, I've got it to go down a little bit. I've got the heater on in here. So, trying to get it a little bit warmer. So this print comes out good. I do really like these menus though. Go in increments. Or you can go singles like this. Got my base for the case down here. I ran out of filament, so it didn't get all the way over. There's a gap right there you can see, but I'm just going to super glue it together. I got every little bit out of that filament. For some reason, I had terrible stringing yesterday, and I think it was because of humidity down here. It did rain last night, and got a little bit of a leak down here in the basement. Um, so I'm switching to the Silky Silver now. And... This stuff was pretty old in its defense, but it came out really nice at 0.28. So the uh, power supply is going to go in here, and then it'll have a box over top of that. And I really like this model because you can upgrade it over and over again. You don't have to print the whole thing. It's got a Raspberry Pi slide-out box. Uh, it's got a, uh, a hole for fans. It's also got a hole for extra USB ports. Um, the dude really thought of everything on this one. I like it a lot. So this is going to be my uh, LCD case, obviously. So I'll uh, load another video when it's all done. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hobbies and Hot Rods, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'm in quarantine. Stay safe out there.